In today's video, we're going to be unboxing the Ender 3 S1. Let's go. So in this box here is the Ender 3 S1 3D printer, the new printer in the Ender 3 line from Creality. This is actually the first Ender 3 printer I've ever owned and it does have quite a hefty price increase over the basic and the original Ender 3. This is the next Ender release in the series of Ender 3D printers. You've got the Ender 3 original, the Ender 3 V2 and now the Ender 3 S1. But I'm expecting a lot for this printer considering it's around twice the price of the V2. The V2 comes in around £190 or $200 and this one comes in at about £380 or $400. So it's quite an expensive printer now. Anyway, let's get it open and have a look. So we've got off to somewhat of a bad start rather than the normal uh, roll of filament. We've just got this little sample coil. Not the end of the world for me because I never really use these anyway as I have obviously my own filament brand and I hate the uh, overseas filament. But yeah, I, I'd be pretty disappointed if I was opening a printer for the first time and that was what I was given as the uh, free filament sample tip in the box which basically gives some example retraction values depending on whether you're using a TPU or a PLA. Then got this packet of goodies which I will open in a minute. We've got the new direct drive hot end. It's got here a Creality version of the BL Touch. I'll be really interested to see how this performs as I've never particularly found BL Touch is that reliable. Uh, it's got the fan cooling. The fan cooling still only comes from one side. It's then got the heated cartridge here hot end and uh, silicon sock wrapped around the nozzle really quite nicely then interestingly we've got the hot end cooling fan at the side and uh, we've got a flat stepper motor here so this is obviously a direct drive uh, extrusion unit we'll be really interested to see how this performs this is obviously one of the major upgrades from the v2 this pancake stepper and a geared drive gear looks a little bit reminiscent of some of the e3d designs and we've got all of the cabling feeding into the back of this board and so it's obviously going to take a larger cable over the back which will hopefully relieve some of the stresses that these cables can get into so i will be really interested to see not how this performs straight out of the box but also how it performs a year down the line i bought this one quite early so it's come with the, the power cable um not the one I need, but I'll replace that for a UK one. We've got this clip, which has fallen out somewhere. Another plastic thing. This, which I'm presuming is going to be a spool holder and a filament runout sensor. The other part to the spool holder. Take this bit of foam out. You can see the in behind here. We've got the new screen, fancy screen. Pulling this section out. This is obviously the Z axis and X axis. I do want to note that although I haven't had an Ender 3, I have had many of the Creality printers and do just want to give a quick shout out to the fact that the build quality of this printer so far seems vastly improved. So far, it's feeling like a completely different bit of kit. So it will be very interesting to see how it performs. Next up, we've got the base of the unit. So the heated bed, the controller board all in here. And another thing I'll note while I'm looking at it, is it's got some really nice strain relief. This is one hell of a sturdy cable coming out, providing the obviously the thermistor and the heating element for the bed. There does seem to be a lot more consideration in this printer so far for cable management. There's not cables all over the place. Everything is quite nicely wrapped and constrained. So that is a good sign. Okay, so back to that packet I showed you earlier. Karate after sales card, standard edition scraper, the installation guide, some stickers, Snippers. We've got a spare nozzle. What's interesting to note is their nozzles do seem to have a slightly different design. Not sure if there will be any benefit to that or whether it's just to complement the new silicone socks or just a sneaky way to lock you into that infrastructure. We shall see. SD card with a USB adapter for it. We've got a nozzle needle, some spare parts, a set of Allen keys and little fixed size spanners and a flat screwdriver and then we've also got the bolts for securing it together which I'm going to need now. Okay so the next part we're going to be taking the z-axis gantry 
and attaching the hot end and drive gear units goes on into these alignment points here and holds in place really quite nicely. We can then screw it in using the included Allen keys and screws. There's four bolts in the side here and four. So you can see that's all been tightened up nicely. We're then gonna take this clip that I showed earlier. It's called the cable mounting clip and attach the top here of the right lead screw. Quite a nice fit. And that goes on there like that bit here. We're then going to put the z-axis gantry onto the bed itself and tilt this to the side M5 by 45 bolts then do the same on the other side and then once that's been done they can be tightened up again using the included allen keys. One thing to note they have included an extra bolt each time so far and that's always a good idea because it does mean if you were ever to accidentally drop one during the assembly, then you've got a spare. It also means that if they were to have a, a mistake in packaging and put one less in, then again, you've still got enough to complete the installation. Okay, that's all nice and solid. Next thing is to add the display. So we've got the display mounting bracket here and obviously the display. That's gonna go on here in this front left-hand section there the cable clips into the back and the screen just slides down okay so that is the screen on as well now next step is to put the filament holder on that attaches to the top here that just goes on there like that it's a nice push nice tight push fit which is far easier than installing those sliding t-nut things which are just a pain I've always found them a pain what's interesting is they've mounted the inline filament runout sensor on this swiveling contraption so it can move in all directions like that presumably going to give you a little bit more flexibility with the filament but also is going to put less pressure on this filament runout sensor itself the filament sensor comes to the front like this with the wiring cable coming in from the left hand side and that gives it still quite a lot of degrees of movement. We can then plug in all the various cables we've got. We've got this little section down here where we can wire in the cables, Z-axis motor. And we've got this main cable here, which comes up, goes into the X-axis, the end stop. And the cable then comes along there. and is secured into place at the top. It does have another port here called expansion interface. And I'm not exactly sure what that is, but maybe we'll find out. So at this point, we should have everything set up. And as I said, I've never owned an original Ender 3 printer, but I can't help get the feeling that this is in a different league. This is the sort of printer, this build quality, this thought about the cable management, this setup, this what I expect will be reliability. The fact you've got belt tensioners built into the side ports here and here. It looks and feels like a, a completely different Corality machine. And I think that's quite a clever angle to go for uh, because there's so many clones out there just knocking out the cheaper, cheaper printers, trying to knock off the success they had with the CR10 or the Ender 3 indeed itself. And it just gets it just gets to the point where it's a bit of a rat race so i think stepping up their build quality a little bit and maybe going after i don't know the the Prusa mark three with this printer is a clever idea obviously if you compare this printer to the price of an ender three it's twice the price but if you compare it to a Prusa mark three it's half the price so if it performs well it could be doing something very good so you've got here a nice powder coated magnetic bed which looks really nice quality I'm, uh, and, and it has a really powerful magnet. In the past I've always hated magnetic beds as they've had some really useless magnets and they can slide off the bed if uh, your part's knocked by the printer during printing so that looks really good. Obviously quality of a printer like this always looks even better when you slap a nice ball of filament on it and you can see that it's going to roll nicely down into the printer. 
It's got very similar mechanics to the Ender, to the original Ender 3. Single bout driven bed, the same wheels on a 20x20 20 20 extrusion frame. But it's interesting that Crowdy have opted for different style of 20x20 20 20 extrusion, where the front and the back is this sort of faced off thing, which does have a, a much nicer feel to it. Anyway, so now that's all plugged in and set up, I think we may as well switch it on and have a quick look. I won't completely dive into using this printer in this video as it's already quite long, but I will obviously come back in a few weeks after using this printer and give my review. Right, switched on. It's got a warning note here reminding you to select the correct voltage at the back. I had already checked it was on 230 volts. Peel that label off. On the screen. And we've got a really nice screen, which is not a touch screen. It's controlled by this little dial here. SD card goes in the front of the bed here. First things it tells you to do is perform the auto leveling. This is one of the fancy features that uh, it had on the advert. So let's go down to level here. It's really quiet. Really quiet indeed. It's just a faint hum, but I'm very sure you'd be happy with this in your room. At the moment, I can't really hear any fan noise, which obviously might change when it's printing, but for the most part, this seems to be, so far, a very quiet machine. Creality BL Touch working its magic. They call it a CR Touch. <laughs> it's currently performing nine point auto bed leveling. I tell a lie, it was 16 point auto bed leveling. It's now returning to the center. And the next thing it's going to want me to do is test the level, which I'm gonna do with a business card up to prepare and set the Z offset and down onto the card. Nice degree of squash. Okay, so we'll set that. Right, we're then gonna go ahead and install some filament. I'm gonna preheat PLA, pair the filament. Suggests to take the end and trim it on a 45 degree angle through the filament runout sensor and the light then turns blue. Move the filament down into the extruder gear. Move it all the way to the front, which in a minute will be able to extrude. I must say that was an incredibly easy process to get that all set up. And the filament is at a really nice path. Obviously the reason this rotates is to allow the printer to move back and forward without putting too much stress on the filament itself. So good design there. Print. We're going to do a cat. My PLA likes it a little bit hotter than some of the Chinese stuff, so I'm just going to tweak the nozzle temperature up to 210, and then we'll wait and see how this gets on. Doing a priming line to start. That is obviously something you would set up in your slicer. And now it's moving on to the print. Okay, so that's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button. Really appreciate it. Also, if you're not a subscriber of the channel already, then why not subscribe? Obviously, if you're interested in this printer, you're going to want to see the review video, and that will be out in a few weeks. But before that, we've also got the review video of the Weedo X40 IDEX 3D printer coming out too. And I also do a number of different tutorials, uh, tips and tricks, and those sort of videos, 3D printing videos plus the odd thing that I enjoy. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in any of that. Um, anyway, yeah, that's it for me, and I will see you next time. Cheers.